Welcome everyone to our annual celebration. It is a joy and honor to welcome you as we come together to celebrate the first year of our journey together in the Laudato Si Action Platform. My name is Maria Virginia Solijuanich, speaking to you from Córdoba, Argentina. I'm here today as a co-founder and co-CEO of the Farm of Francesco and as a representative of the economy of Francesco, as member of the Laudato Si Action Platform, where I serve in the steering board and as one of the leaders of the economy working group. And today, it is a pleasure to be your moderator this morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you are. We would like to thank you all for being here at this special celebration. The Laudato Si Action Platform give us the opportunity to connect globally and for us to be connected today worldwide for this special moment. This event is being live streamed in English with simultaneous translation in different languages, including Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and French. You can find it available through the Laudato Si Action platform Facebook channels. As you join us today, we invite you to share in the chat box your name and where you are joining us from, because we want to feel how global and wide this event is today. During our celebration, we will have the opportunity to pray together, learn about the theological perspectives of the Laudato Si Action Platform and the achievements of our journey together at the platform and also be prepared at the end of our event to share through social media the great joy of our celebration. And now to start with our event, we want to um, start by having a joint prayer all together. For that reason, I would like to invite us uh, to join uh, Sister Sheila Kinsey. She's member of the Laudato Si Action Platform Steering Board an executive co-secretary of the JPIC Commission, USJUISJ, uh, to lead us for our opening prayer. We also invite you to share your prayers in the chat box during this moment. Thank you so much for this wonderful time to be together as we join together in this prayer. God, our loving Father, you so love the world. As we journey together in pilgrimage on this holy land, may we perceive the infinite facets of your love, beauty, and glory reflected in the whole of creation and all that live and breathe in flowers, forests, seas and stars, and in the faces of young and old. May we stand in awe and adoration before the grandeur and delicate equilibrium of the community of creation. Christ, our brother, you pitched your tent amongst us and you shared the fatigue and toil of our labors. Have mercy on us for having abused the gifts of creation. For the times we have sown destruction, hatred and violence and brought death to our fellow humans and our fellow creatures. Make us keepers of the seamless web of life of this planetary garden and of one another. Holy Spirit, Ruer, the breath of life, you feel the world and hold everything together. Grant us the wisdom to recognize our interconnectedness and interdependence. And may we grow in solidarity with all of create creatures, 
especially the most vulnerable of our sisters and brothers. Inflame us with renewed zeal to care for our imperiled planetary home and send us out as your apostles in the peripheries of the world to announce the gospel of creation to every creature. Inspire and sustain, and sustain us in our actions to rebuild our common home and communities. Amen. Let it be, as we say with Mary, the mother of creation. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sheila, for guiding us through this beautiful prayer. And for our next moment, I am glad uh, to invite on screen John Mandel. He is director of the Laudato Si Action Platform, appointed by the Vatican's Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, to share with us some words of welcome and news about this first year of the Laudato Si Action Platform. Welcome, John. The floor is yours. Thank you, Maureen. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. John. Oh, very good. Good day, everyone. Maybe the first slide, Maureen, you can go ahead and bring up. Everyone, this is our beautiful blue dot, our sister mother earth, to use the words of St. Francis more than 800 years ago. She sustains us and she gives us life. She also governs us. And we are so grateful for everything that we have that has been given to us from this beautiful blue dot. Next. So today we begin our celebration of our one year anniversary of our participants around the world taking concrete steps towards sustainable lifestyles through their inspirational Laudato Si plans. Let's begin here with a short reminder of all that has happened. That's a quick uh, reminder of the many things that have happened, positive things. Yet at the same time, we know that this past year, we are reminded of the need for action. We've had fast onset events that have continued to impact the world during this time, like flash floods, storms such as hurricanes, tornadoes, extreme heat waves, large scale forest fires and persistent droughts. Next. In the midst of all this, our wonderful LSAP community has responded. We've brought our passion, our experience, and know-how to begin to meet the world's greatest needs. And I love this quote because I think this has motivated many of us. We believe in what we're doing. We believe in the importance of our mission. And we also believe it's one of the most important Important things we can do with our lives. Next. And so how have we dared to do this? We've continued on the local scale with so many wonderful actions in schools, with classrooms, and outside of the classrooms, in businesses. Next. Among young people, doing all kinds of creative things to take care of the earth. 
Next. And young adults gathering all over the world, impassioned by the, the desire, but also the awareness of their need to begin to act. Next. We've also participated in responsible citizenship. We've marched. We've contacted our Congress representatives and political people to ask them to act. Next. And we've also developed and continue to develop and launch the Laudato Si Action Platform. You know, we everyone, just as a reminder, it's a Vatican-led initiative. It's action-oriented. It's inspired by Pope Francis's 2015 encyclical letter, Laudato Si, which encourages all of us to care for our common home. It is both a tool and a growing living community at your service and your, on your journey toward integral ecology. Next. And so many of us come to this with our own stories. You know, I have my own story from the United States and Indianapolis of all the things we've done over the last seven years, all kinds of events. And all of you have your stories. And we've seen them, they've been shared on our platform, and they've been very inspiring. Next. And so I wanna give a little bit of a vision of why we're doing this. You know, as we've, we're working to, uh, before the LSAP happened, I think each of us were very active, but we were like these, like a stone thrown into a lake. We've, we were able to create small ripples around us, impacting our local areas in small ways, sometimes in bigger ways, but, in, but, but really individually. And alone, we know that we can only have so much impact. Sometimes we don't have the resources or we even lose our own inspiration because we feel like we're alone. However, when we start coordinating our global efforts together, you know, rather amazing things can happen. We reinforce each other's resources with ideas, with encouragement, and those little ripples begin to intersect, and some turn into small currents heading in the same direction. Some have a multiplying effect and can turn into big waves that begin to flood, in a good way, all the things around us. It can be like these big waves that inundate and soak everything from within, and this can be very transforming. So this unity is pretty amazing. It's an amazing vision. And this year, we've begun to catch small glimpses of these greater impacts as more and more of us come together on the platform and on local and global projects. Next. And so who are we? Who is this LSAP community? You know, I think we hit and gathered most of the most passionate and involved Catholics from around the world who were touched by the message of Laudato Si. And some who have been involved for many years in fact, some for many decades. I look at myself with my gray beard. To be the most effective, I think we have to see ourselves as people connectors, creating little networks of relationships and sometimes not so little networks. Or we may act as bridge builders between difficult or impossible situations like lacking sometimes hierarchical support for what we're doing or financial resources or even our own personal time. In this next period we're about to enter, we can think of ourselves as weavers of the fabric of community, creating relationships of value and intimacy among the sectors that we're engaged with and the Laudato Si goals, helping to create the create this rich tapestry of authentic communities. Next. 
And so LSAP is a tool, but it's also a community. And it's a way of keeping ourselves honest. There's something about peer pressure that helps us go forward sometimes. It's following through. It's seeing progress little by little against a culture that doesn't want us to succeed. Sometimes a very selfish culture. And sometimes we are our own worst enemies. So the earth, the poor, and our future generations, these are three pillars upon which our motivation rests. The earth is, is in dire need. It's impacting and the conditions are impacting our poorest communities. And our young people cry out for action. Next. And so when we're getting people to sign up, what will we tell them? Well, we all have lots of ideas in our own unique areas. Whether that means we sign up in order to gather resources and have a community and fulfill actions, or whether it's for our children or grandchildren, or whether it's because we view this LSAP as a way to have global impact when we reach a critical mass and many local actions come together. For me this last year, it's also been a global community of kindred spirits and like-minded believers. Many times I've felt alone and to, to hear the stories and hear the vision of others from around the world keeps me going. It also brings this sense of joy and fulfillment in my life. I'm doing something worthwhile. This matters. It matters to me. I think it matters to God, our creator. And many times this voice inside of cannot be silenced. Next. And so we have our goals and our sectors. We've, if we've been involved this last year, we know about these goals. The goals that help us create actions that matter. And we've divided ourselves into sectors somewhat artificially, but yet purposefully because we believe that within our global Catholic community, these are the sectors that perhaps if we can make a difference matter the most. Everything from our parishes and dioceses, which are really according to our structure in the church, to our individuals and families, to our religious congregations. I will even say something. I like this, this middle sector here being religious orders because they have been really the little engine that helps drive many things. And they've been some of our biggest and strongest advocates and action-oriented folks. Next. And so our working groups and our steering committee have really assisted in this development and uh, of the platform. And they now provide ongoing guidance and leadership for our LSAP journey. You know, we I wish we could have listed everyone who has been involved this last year in, in this whole process, this whole messy process, which is messy because it's also historic. Providing all kinds of volunteer time and energy and ideas and resources. We want to say the biggest thank you we can for all of your efforts. From those early morning or late night Zoom calls to responding to emails from unknown people from all around the world. It's been challenging, but also very exciting. And also sharing this thank you for sharing your particular ideas, your particular culture, and your particular concerns. Nothing, I can tell you, was wasted, not even the most difficult things. Again, thank you for all of that work you've done. Next. So let's celebrate. We have a lot to celebrate. And I have someone very special who has sent us a message from the whole world, in front of the whole world, to us personally. Go ahead, Marie.
Cari fratelli e sorelle, domani ricorre il primo anniversario dell'avvio della piattaforma di azione Laudato Si, che promuove la conversione logica e stili di vita coerenti con essa. Ringrazio quanti hanno aderito a questa iniziativa. Si tratta di circa 6.000 partecipanti, tra cui singole persone, famiglie, associazioni, imprese, istituzioni religiose, culturali e sanitarie. È un ottimo inizio per un percorso di sette anni volto a rispondere al grido della terra e al grido dei poveri. Incoraggio questa missione cruciale per il futuro dell'umanità affinché possa favorire in tutti un concreto impegno per la cura del creato. In questa prospettiva desidero ricordare il vertice COP27 sul clima che si sta svolgendo in Egitto. Auspico che si facciano passi in avanti, con coraggio, determinazione, nel solco tracciato dell'Accordo di Parigi. I'm clapping here as if I was in St. Peter's Square. Wasn't that amazing? I think if there's any question that the Pope doesn't follow the work we're doing, I hope this answers it. I know from my recent work at the Dicastri that he's very interested in continuing this path and continuing to, to energize the Catholic faithful and the world. So, Maureen, if you want to continue with the slides here, if we can find that. And so... Celebration continues. We have here the cover of the soon to be published Laudato Si Action Platform Annual Report for our first year. It's a brief highlight of the things we've accomplished, and it's something that you are able to send to people and to use to expand your reach and your motivation for others. Uh, next. And so I want to say this message from Cardinal Cherney of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, also from Sister Alessandra Smorelli, who's done a lot of things. But I think these are important words. Let's have confidence in the special calling each of us experiences and in the critical nature of our shared mission. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice or timidity, but rather of power and love and self-control. That's from 1 Timothy. It is only with bold, coordinated, and sustained action based on ongoing conversion that we can accomplish the work that God initiates in us and entrusts to us. I like some of these words. I think they challenge us not to be coward or not to be timid in the work we do. Sometimes we can be uh, too careful. It also encourages us to be bold and coordinated. Without coordination, as we're trying to do on the Laudato Si Action Platform, we have a lot of energy that moves in many different directions. So thank you, Cardinal Cherney, for this reminder. Next page. And so let's celebrate our community. What has it become? Here we have some numbers of interest. As we know, the numbers don't tell the whole story about the who and the why and the what was done. But with a low end number of 2.5 million people reached, that's an amazing start. And by the way, that number doesn't include all of the dioceses that have signed up, our 140 dioceses, our 350 parishes, our 700 schools, or our 180 universities. If these numbers were included, we would probably be more like 15 million that have potentially become impacted or begun to become impacted. I also like the number of families we've reached and the people within the family, some 8,000 within families. And so our various sectors, thank you for all of the work that we've begun. This is a good baseline of, of, uh, to celebrate, to begin our next year. 
Next slide. And let's celebrate our connections worldwide. You can see by this world map which the uh, where the engagement lies, where we've connected, with most of them being in Europe so far, then North America, then South America, then Asia. You can see, though, we have still significant work to do. With 1.3 billion Catholics, we need to increase our reach. But this is something to celebrate. We are all across the entire planet, even if we're small still. Next slide. Let's celebrate our sharing, the reflections that have been uploaded. And as you can see, not, not everyone has uploaded the reflections, but they've been shared by various sectors. These are kind of, in my view, like our diamonds. They're like jewels that are very beautiful and unique. If you haven't had time to read some of these, please take one day and go in there and enjoy yourselves. You will be inspired. This is part of what I would say is our secret ingredient or sauce of the LSAP, sharing our stories and our dreams and our faith with those around us. I remember reading one reflection from a group of Benedictine nuns, and after reading it, I too wanted to become a Benedictine because of the beautiful things they shared about their charism and creation. Each of us have something to give. And it doesn't have to be very much to make a difference. Next. Let's also celebrate our plans. The plans uploaded this year. Again, we would like to have even more plans that are kind of implemented and shared with others. But they show very extensive lists of action by many people during this first year. But some also show very simple, very straightforward but real actions that they can accomplish. All of these continue to be welcomed. Next. So now let's celebrate a few actions from around the world. We've received inspirational stories on a regular basis. Let me share some. This is one from Kiribati, an island country in Oceania. In response to Pope Francis's Laudato Si encyclical, the missionaries of the Sacred Heart mobilized young people in planting mangrove seedlings, a plant that plays a vital role in marine habitat and coastal protection. Next slide. A town in the Turuchilapalli in India, I apologize for my pronunciation, is leading to more food security self-sustaining communities. Enlightened and inspired by the reflection shared on LSAP, Sister Azarius Arokia Mary Selvi, Social Development Coordinator for ASSIST, that's the Auxilium Synergy Source for Integrated Social Transformation, arranged for farmers to be trained on honey beekeeping to increase the presence of bees on their farms. I like this one because my dad had a personal relationship with bees. He said, remember the honeybees, they're so important. Next page. In the United States, the Chapel Hill Crop Hunger Walk in North Carolina supports local hunger relief programs, agricultural assistance, and sustainable energy and clean water projects and food and emergency help to refugees, displaced persons, and victims of natural disasters. The St. Thomas More Parish, whose inspiring Laudato Si plan can be found on the platform, has participated in 35 annual crop walks. Last year, the parish raised $9,000, almost 20% of the total. Thank you, St. Thomas More Parish. Next slide. And in South Africa, in commemoration of the vigil of Assumption of, at Cathedral of Christ the King in Johannesburg, Archbishop Buti Tagali blessed the occasion by planting trees, watering them as a sign of hope, and finishing with the Laudato Si prayer by Pope Francis, a prayer for our earth. 
Later on, a second planning took place in Cagiso, St. Peter Catholic Church, where trees were planted at the church and the nearby school is a sign of peace. And so next slide, there is much hope. What do I have this year that I didn't have as much of? I have much more hope. All of your and all from you and just the awareness of what you have done fills me with hope and gratitude to God for all of your good hearts. With all of these experiences and activities, we have a lot of reason to hope. Next. And so what can we share with others? We can share our stories from our annual report. We can, uh, and we can share our heart. Our hearts move people, just like the movie The Letter has in over six, or excuse me, over eight million viewers. And this is the work we've only accomplished this first year, summarized in our report. So, I also put up there a smaller condensed publication that will be going from the dicastery to all the bishops of the world called Our Common Home, A Guide to Caring for Our Living Planet, which will help inform our hierarchy even more of our, our activity. So with that, congratulations to everyone. Let's continue the celebration and begin our next phase with a great positive outlook on what we can accomplish. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I was also clapping here from Argentina and all these stories that, that you share from different parts of the world, um, I am sure it's bringing a lot of hope and there are many, many reasons for us today to celebrate. And, and we are looking forward to, to more years to come in the Laudato Si Action Platform. So thank you that, for that. Thank you also for reminding us the need to begin to act in our local realities. And now to continue our event, we are glad to invite Father Jostrom Uritada, SDB Theological Consultant of the Laudato Si Action Platform and member of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development to share with us a theological reflection of the Laudato Si Action Platform. Thank you very much, Maria Virginia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. It's really a great joy for me to join this great big family. You know, I had the, the, the joy to clap in person. I was just a few hundreds of meters away from Pope Francis yesterday as, as he reminded us of the first anniversary of the Laudato Si Action Platform. And uh, I, I really thank all for two things, one for Laudato Si and all the initiatives around Laudato Si, for Francis who gave us the encyclical, for Francis who gave us the Laudato Si, and the numerous initiatives, the movie, the Laudato Si chapels, the Laudato Si garden, and so many others. And last but not the least important, the most beautiful fruit of the Laudato Si has been the Laudato Si Action Platform, on which we started working in 2018, so nearly three years of work. And now the first anniversary, Pope Francis himself announced the, the Laudato Si Action Platform on 25th of May 2021. He opened the registrations last year on 14th of November, and what a joy he also invited us to celebrate the first birthday. So happy to share with you a few theological reflections and uh, thank you for putting up the slides. I was praying over what to share with you. And I said, we are evangelizing. Now we are, what we do through Laudato Si is at the core of our being Christians because Jesus command to us in Mark 14, 13, is to go and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's what Laudato Si Action Platform is aiming at. I would like to share with you five reflections. Next slide, please. You know, uh, five C's around the Laudato Si Action Platform. The first C is concern. Concern about the state 
of our common home. And uh, the gospel passage that inspires me is John 2.17, when Jesus enters the temple and he chases out the, the merchants, the money lenders, everyone, because they have turned God's house into a den of thieves. Uh, and uh, that's what's happening to our common home. The next slide, we can see uh, the anchor of Jesus, a sort of holy anchor. And I think that's what should uh, grip us at this moment. You know, we are destroying our own planetary home. Uh, currently, I'm speaking, speaking to you from the Salesian University where I teach every Monday. And we are talking about oil companies. You know, just last three months total, and we are fighting them for the eco project in uh, uh, Uganda, Tanzania. Uh, in three months, they made a profit of over $10 billion, the BP, X, and the double of that. And, and uh, we are destroying our common home. Uh, and uh, like Jesus, I think that holy anchor should possess us. But not just that externally, but also, I think, to us. It's through our consumerism, uh, we can think of 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, when Prophet Nathan confronts David after he has committed adultery with Bathsheba. And uh, David plays an anchor, as we know. The, he, Nathan narrates the parable uh, of uh, a rich man who had a guest and he took the lamb of, of his poor neighbor. And David says, that man should be put to death. And Nathan replies, uh, you are that man. So I think it should be a holy anchor uh, projected out, out externally, but also inwardly. And that should be our first uh, point, you know, a, a deep concern for the state of our common home, this holy anchor. The second point is how do we respond to this anchor? I would say, next slide, please, through two attitudes. One is that of contemplation. And Pope Francis very often speaks of contemplation, that we need to recover the sense that God's planet is sacred, uh, that it has been entrusted to our stewardship. Next slide, uh, we see uh, again the book of Exodus, uh, God telling Moses, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. So this is the, the first thing we need to recover, that God's creation is sacred. And I chose this image of the indigenous communities. Uh, they, better than anyone, can teach us that the land is sacred, that our communities are sacred, that our relationships are sacred. Uh, so this is the, the element of contemplation that we need to recover. And also aware of the telos of creation, you know, Colossians 1.16, Ephesians 1.20, the recapitulation of everything in Christ, that the entire creation, all God's creatures, all of us, but with the rest of God's creation, we will be reconciled with God. So creation is something sacred, something to be stewarded, but also something to be preserved for the, for the salvation, for the universal salvation. So the first attitude with which we respond to this holy anchor for the state of our common home is contemplation. The second attitude, uh, next slide, please. Uh, thank you, Maureen. It's uh, compassion you know hearing the the cry the, the, i would say the three cries uh, the cry of the poor uh, the cry of our children who are protesting and a few weeks ago i was reading an article from Celine who wrote for the global sisters report uh, reminding us that that preferential the, the preferential option for the poor we need to widen it today as a preferential option for the protection of life, especially life that is threatened, life of our fellow brothers and sisters, life of our children, future generations. Next slide, please. And the lives of all God's creatures. And we know there is so much of suffering. 
and we too are called to respond because our god is a god who listens to the cries and we need to walk with our god again exodus the lord said i have indeed seen the misery of my people in egypt i have heard them crying crying out because of their slave drivers so the, this is compassion compassion is responding to these cries let's go to the the fourth point next slide please uh, the two things we need to do uh, at the level of action uh, first of all we need to create a circular movement from the peripheries and we have the the beatitude matthew 5 5 blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth uh, today on 14th of november which last year was the world day of the poor we celebrate the first anniversary uh, i am convinced it was a gift from the holy spirit you know uh, most of you know especially those in the working groups in the steering board that originally we wanted to open the registrations on the on the 4th of october some of you are ready so we had the 40 days of prayer campaign and we opened uh, almost by chance you know uh, that was the next uh, available date 14th of november but there was a very powerful message that our planet our common home will be saved by the meek by the poor by the the, the gentle by the peripheries and yesterday I was following also uh, pope francis mass and especially the the lunch with the poor and what struck me was it was a good lunch and uh, even the chairs you know those were chairs they used for bishops or cardinals and the 1300 people were sitting on those chairs so that's the reason i call it a circular movement it's beginning with the peripheries so that the, so that the peripheries can become the centers and that's what we are trying to do with the lauda to see action platform that we go to the peripheries so that so the peripheries can become the centers uh, next slide please and uh, Uh, another part is uh, Luke chapter 21 you know Jesus at the temple the disciples are impressed by the by the construction the big stones everything but Jesus sees the the little poor widow uh, who puts two coins two copper coins in the in the temple treasury and Jesus says she has given much more than everyone else and that's what's consoling us you know the circular movement when we begin with the peripheries we are walking with god so circular movement from the peripheries and my last reflection uh, that we need to multiply that we need to next slide please we need to create as we have been always say, saying the critical mass building of so again five c's and so Uh, we need to have compassion contemplation create so that we can reach the critics and the gospel passage that inspired me uh, is uh, john chapter 6 you know the scene the miracle of, of the multiplies all that was possible thousands of them gospel tells us nearly 5000 Uh, without counting women and children uh, uh, all that was possible because there was a boy who was willing to sh- share with five small bad, uh, badly loaves and two small fish but uh, and um, andrew is asking how can we feed so many people next slide please but the miracle happens that we can create The, the the critical mass you know uh, and as we know the critical mass is 3.5% of humanity so happy to hear from john that we are like around 15 million but as we know it's uh, nowhere near the the the, the critical mass uh, uh, so to have 3.5% we need at least 300 million then we need to aim towards between 20 to 25% of humanity that's like a couple of billions you know we need to work arrive at but with other churches with other, other religions we can do it so our invitation to you is uh, can we multiply can we grow seven fold like now all of us who are already partners a family 
Uh, I'm speaking Salesian University, which is allowed that to see university. Uh, can I find seven more universities? Can I find seven more hospitals? Can I find seven more religious communities? Can I find seven more uh, businesses? Can I, can I find seven more groups, seven more schools? You know, so all of so each year, so this year, if you can get at least seven more, ideal would be seventy-seven times, but at least sevenfold. So in that way. Each year, we can grow sevenfold and reach a critical mass. And uh, so these are the five reflections uh, that I would like to share with you. The last slide, and with that, we conclude that this is a journey, uh, yeah, the, the, the sevenfold growth. We began in 2021, the World Day of the Poor, and let's grow and multiply at least sevenfold each year in order to re arrive at the critical mass needed for radical societal transformation invoked by Pope Francis in Laudato Si. And uh, the very last slide, and this time I really close, uh, it's uh, that we are walking the synodal path. It is a truly spread synodal journey led by the Holy Spirit, but all of us together as a common family. So these are the very few simple theological reflections I would like to share with you. The five C's, concern, contemplation, compassion, and circular movement, and critical mass. May the Holy Spirit continue to assist us on our journey. And thanks to each one of you for being, as Sister Sheila said in the prayer, being apostles of the Lauda to See action platform. Lauda to See. May the Lord be, be praised. Thank you. Thank you, Father Josh, uh, for your beautiful reflection and for all your work and support to the Laudato Si Action Platform all these years. And now, uh, keeping with our event, we will now listen to three inspiring testimonies from different regions and sectors of participants and promoters of the Laudato Si Action Platform. They will share with us their journey and experience with the platform and how they are making progress towards sustainability in the holistic spirit of Laudato Si. Our first presenter is Bishop Shane McKinley of the Diocese of Sandhurst, Chair of the Australian Plenary Council Steering Committee and member of the Australian Plenary Council Draft Year Committee for the Plenary Council. They will share with us about the latest action they have taken related to the integral ecology and the Laudato Si Action Platform. When Pope Francis published his encyclical Laudato Si in 2015, it was welcomed in Australia as something that picked up a lot of the concerns that have been part of our situation here for many years, growing concerns about the climate and about its impact on the way that, uh, that we all live together, about really what we've come to describe in terms of integral ecology, that term introduced by Pope Benedict and then built on by Pope Francis in Laudato Si and then later in Fratelli Tutti that we're all interconnected, every part of creation is interconnected, and the way uh, that we experience uh, impact on the ecology, on the created world, is also something that we see in the impact that it has, then that those changes have on the lives of people, particularly those who are the most poor and the most on the margins. So responding to that, uh, and the call in Laudato Si to respond in a formal way, in a, a uh, planned way, to the uh, to the uh, impact that we're having in our created world. Uh, the Australian bishops in, last year published in our social justice statement, our annual social justice statement, Cry of the Earth, Cry of the Poor, which very much like Laudato Si, begins by listening to the voices of those who are most affected, uh, our Indigenous people, those who live in uh, in lower socioeconomic areas, those with less resources and less facilities, uh, those who live uh, in places who are where climate has an impact on farming, 
and on the uh, on the way that water flows in our rivers and is available uh, for for uh, for needs of human communities and uh, and of our agriculture and so on. It starts by begin by uh, listening to the voices of those people who are most affected, and then reflecting on that in the light of our Christian tradition and our scriptures, and then moving towards action, just as Laudato C si does. The actions that we commit ourselves to as the Australian bishops in this statement are that we introduce ecology formally into the name of our Office for Social Justice. We commit ourselves as a bishops' conference to, uh, to pursuing the Laudato Si goals uh, and developing a Laudato Si action plan. Uh, and we invite other Catholic organisations in Australia to do the same. That then got picked up very formally uh, in the Plenary Council which of Australia, which was just concluded in July of this year, where responding to our ecological concerns and uh, to the, the need to act in that way is something that became the core of one of our eight decrees. And that was clear right through our consultation over, uh, over the last four years that one of the key things that we needed to respond to, one of the key concerns of the people of Australia is, uh, is responding to our ecological uh, uh, concerns and, uh, and committing ourselves to action. And so in that eighth decree of the Plenary Council, we committed ourselves to every Catholic organisation in Australia, uh, parishes, schools, healthcare entities, all becoming a part of the Laudato Si action plan, uh, action platform, and developing a Laudato Si action plan, which will begin to implement over the coming years, uh, developing their own or formally participating in another action plan that has been developed by an appropriate entity in their in their area. Uh, and so we're, we're, uh, we're looking forward with enthusiasm uh, to the many places I know in my own diocese and parishes in my diocese and schools in my diocese, there's already much action that has taken place and there's more actions that people are progressively and systematically committing to uh, through drawing on the resources and the support that's available through the Laudato C platform uh, in developing our, their Laudato C action plans and, uh, and increasingly putting things from those plans into action so that we can uh, build up and support the, the flourishing of the whole of creation as part of this integral ecology that Pope Francis puts before us, before us so beautifully in Laudato Si. Thank you, Bishop McKinley, for sharing the amazing work in Australia. Our next presenter is Sister Runita Galve Borja, General Counselor for Youth Pastoral from the Institute of the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians. She will share with us about the amazing work around the world as a religious congregation who has enrolled and promoting the platform. Welcome, Sister Runita. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My fellow El Sappers, I would like first to thank the Dicastery for promoting integral human development and the Laudato Si movement for the invitation to share the journey of our congregation on the road to integral ecology. So please, Maureen, can you, um, can you put the slides on? Slide number two, please, thank you. The Institute of the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians, also known as the Salesian Sisters, founded by St. John Bosco and St. Mary Domenica Mazzarello, is a religious congregation of women. We have one passion, the integral education of young people with special attention to women and the most vulnerable. We are present in 98 countries in the peripheries in the most abandoned places, as well as in the big cities. Next slide, please. The commitment made toward an integral ecology asks us to respond in creative fidelity 
and revisit the charism so that it expresses its vitality in the present. Our involvement in the Laudato Si Action Platform is one of the concrete ways of responding to the search for meaning in life, the loss of joy, and the darkening of hope, especially in and among young people. In 2019, our Institute's World Coordination for Youth Ministry invited our educating communities composed of the sisters, our lay mission partners or collaborators, and the young people themselves to join the project Together We Can in order to live Laudato Si by applying the Design for Change methodology for a renewed ecological consciousness. In fact, five projects from Brazil, Chile, and Colombia were presented at the Children's Global Summit Design for Change held in Rome in 2019. We urge the educating communities to share their lived experiences on integral ecology. And in 2021, we collected in two volumes, 299 projects and initiatives, activities, and processes from all over the world. From 2020 onward, two daughters of Mary Help of Christians, promoters of justice, peace, and integrity of creation, have been involved in the working group of the religious order sector of the Laudato Si Action Platform. The youth ministry sector organized several webinars for our groups of provinces in order to present the Laudato Si Action Platform to explore the paradigm and perspective of integral ecology and to guide the elaboration of Laudato Si action plans. The proposal of the Laudato Si platform was welcomed with great enthusiasm throughout the whole institute. Our Mother General, Mother Chiara, Mother Chiara expressed it well in her circular letter number 1022. She says, to face the future and prepare for it with wisdom and foresight, it is necessary to move forward together as an educating community in an ever-widening network in the church, in society, in synergy with institutions, with groups of the Salesian family, with other congregations, and with different vocations. The 24th General Chapter held in Rome in 2021 expressed the commitment of our entire institute through the following chapter deliberation. I quote, the chapter assembly allowed itself to be challenged by the cry of the young, the poor, and the earth, and decided to involve the whole institute in a concrete and continuous journey of conversion to integral ecology, taking on the seven goals of Laudato Si as a network in the spirit of the Salesian preventive system. Here are also some strong moments after our general chapter. The General Council made concrete commitments in its six-year plan of government and animation. The first commitment concerns the accompaniment of the Institute in the process of assuming the chapter deliberation through first the development of an institutional policy for integral ecology. Second, the creation of an international commission to offer a training path. And third, the implementation of the adherence to the Laudato Si Action Platform. The second commitment is, is aimed at designing, implementing, and accompanying specific formation paths on integral ecology and the global educational pact. A third commitment concerns the revision of two of our fundamental documents the plan of formation, and the guidelines for our educational mission. Another strong moment after the chapter was the workshop, which engaged the General Council and its closest collaborators. Please change the slide. The workshop enabled us to arrive at concrete steps in accompanying the Institute to journey towards conversion to integral ecology in the style of the Salesian Preventive System. Next slide, please. Through a publicity video, I think you can play this while I'm speaking, prepared in five languages, 
we invited the whole institute to join the platform. 870 letters of adherence to the platform arrived from the religious communities and the educating communities, as well as groups, movements, and associations. There are provinces that have implemented and published the action plan as such, while others have invited communities to develop the plan locally and to register as local communities. In this first year of the platform, our institute has published a total of 40 action plans, and the impetus toward integral ecological conversion continues. In addition to webinars conducted in different parts of the world and the sharing of good practices, the FMA institutions of higher studies have conducted lectures on the ethics of care, integral ecology, and the digital world, etc. The Laudato Si Action Platform has stimulated us in our charismatic choice. Next slide, please. For example, in South Sudan, an all-female agricultural project is being developed to promote the empowerment of women in conflict situations. In Benin, the Ecole Alternative Saint Joseph and Espace Seve were created to enable children and young people to enjoy their rights, particularly the right to education. In Ethiopia, the Mary Help College professional formation is an excellent example for intercongregational networking, responding to market needs, promoting technical skills, making young women competent, and placing them in the workforce. The FMA in Cabinda, Angola, together with the young people, have created an ecological reserve as a place to safeguard creation and as a space for prayer. In Linz, Brazil, we have the project Green Bees Brazil Emasau Semiadores do Futuro of the Educational Center Nossa Senhora Auxiliadora. The goal is to ensure the promotion, protection, and respect for human rights and the environment. The High School Maria Auxiliadora of Santa Marta in Colombia created the project I Generate Eco Awareness, Your Hands Are My Voice, and Together We Generate Change. In Chile, the Maria Auxiliatrice Polytechnic Institute in Puerto Montt inaugurated the project Patio Cultivable, where the students grow and harvest ingredients for the food they prepare, contributing to healthy, sustainable, and traditional food. In Uruguay, the Fieles Al Creador project seeks to deepen Laudato Si to carry out concrete actions that create awareness and foster changes in daily habits. On October 28 this year, about 400 young people from educating communities in our Spanish-speaking Central and South American provinces met online to share their experiences of listening to the voice of creation. In Korea, the Salesio Seong Min Nursery School in Seoul has an ecological spirituality program for kids ages 3 to 5. In 2010, the province began to reflect on the preventive system and ecological spirituality. In the Philippines, educational, edu educating communities are engaged in helping families affected by typhoons and other disasters. There is a strong touch of ecological spirituality and response to the cry of the poor, particularly with the Laura Vicuña Foundation. The seven provinces of India are very much engaged in ecological education that promotes ethics and encourages the creation of cooperatives and other profitable activities while respecting nature. They are also very active in campaigns on ecological issues. In Sicily, Italy, the Circolo Laudato Si et Namain, composed of about 50 participants, carries out numerous activities. In Conegliano Treviso, also in Italy, the FMA, the FMA community heeded the Ukrainian emergency by offering Italian courses and opening the doors of our schools for Ukrainian children and young people. The Chov FFP 
Piedmont, also in Italy, received recognition with its project training of food production operators. The project stems from the entity's vision of taking care of the products of the earth from their cultivation at kilometer zero to a good, virtuous, and honest transformation. The Salesian family sector has launched a series of online seminars for past pupils, Salesian cooperators, and members of the Association of Mary Help of Christians with the aim of taking on integral ecology as a dimension of life and the educational mission. In all parts of the world, Today's crisis calls, calls on us to be creative, bold, and tirelessly build networks. Indeed, to make the necessary changes, strong convergence is needed. In education, it is essential to be many in order to make an impact. It is, in fact, a synodal, generative work rooted in caring for life, a typically maternal and Marian mission. These are the words of our Mother General, Mother Chiara Katswola. I conclude by recalling the place of education in all ecological processes and decisions that affect young people and the future generations. In fact, on March 24, 2022, Pope Francis, during an audience, said these words, Young people are showing sensitivity and interest in ecology. There is a great field of education here. Because unfortunately, the worldly mentality also pollutes ecology, reduces it, makes it ideological and superficial. Children and young people are predisposed to become custodians of creation, but they need to learn that this does not reduce to slogans. It's not just denunciation, but it's a way of life requiring patience, fortitude, temperance, justice. In short, one is not born a custodian of creation, but becomes one through an educational journey. And as always, my dear friends, the Pope challenges us to be what our saintly founders always wanted, credible educators of young people, and like them, promoters of a more sustainable world for the happiness of all. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Sister Ronita. Uh, we are amazed by the commitment promoted by your congregation around the world and in Several, several sectors of the platform. Our final presenter is Barbara Cooper. She's director of the Scottish Catholic Education Service. And she will share today with us the work around a whole country in the education sector and how the platform has supported their work. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to, to be part of this day and to share some of our story from Scotland. We are a very small country and we have around 350 Catholic schools. And in the PowerPoint presentation, we'll be able to just give you a flavour of some of the things that we are doing. We started a project for Laudato Si Schools Scotland at the same time as we were celebrating the fifth anniversary of Laudato Si. And we um, looked at that and decided that we wanted to focus on three things, on helping our schools to pray, learn and act. And you can see from this first slide, this is our little logo and it's something we hope is very simple and something that our young people can participate in. But what was the origins of our thought process? On the next slide, we see that in the gospel, um, we hear that when asked about what is the most important commandment, Jesus says quite clearly that um, the commandment that we should uh, love our neighbour as ourselves uh, after we have loved God with all our heart, all our soul, our mind and our strength. So on the next slide, you'll see that we pulled out uh, that section and we took from that that we have to love God, look after each other and to protect our world. So how does that come in? Well, if we take one more slide forward, we've got this highlight for our schools. And on the next slide, we see that we take inspiration 
from what the Holy Father tells us about the fact that we have received a garden so we cannot leave a desert for our children. And we wanted to be part of the Laudato Si action platform. And it beautifully happened that as we in Scotland were deciding on what our journey should look like, the Laudato Si action platform and the seven goals for Laudato Si were also coming out uh, from Rome. So on the next slide, we see how we've connected this to learning within the classroom, what we would call an ecological um, education. If we just click once more, we'll see that we are trying to connect this to things which our governments, our local parishes and our families are very concerned about. So we are moving this away from being an award to being a journey and we want Laudato Si School Scotland to cover everything from learning for sustainability to looking at what children's rights look like in practice to thinking about our Christian responsibility and global citizenship as well as the fun things like outdoor learning and how we can be advocates in action but most importantly helping our young people have a voice to address inequality, poverty prejudice and discrimination. So we have taken what the Holy Father has said in Laudato Si and beyond and our next slide shows the ways in which we have tried to put at the heart of our school's project small steps that children themselves can lead because we don't want them to be the church of tomorrow. We know that they are the church of today. And we feel that while we work in the Laudato Sea Action platforms with businesses and universities and corporate bodies, there are also the small things that we can do as our young people grow in their love of God, their love of neighbor and their love for the world. So the things that we have on this slide about really understanding the dignity of humans also about just being able to live fully and uh, be alive and responsible not just for ourselves but for people in all different parts of the world these are the small things at the heart of what we do and of course on the next slide we see that all of this is absolutely rooted and you can just click through these to show the the four aspects of what we're doing that We've taken the Laudato Si Action platform and if we if we click that slide again, you can see that we are taking the goals and we are uh, in particular looking at the goal right at the heart, number five on education. And if we click again, we see that um, within our schools programme, what we are seeing is that in order to achieve all of the goals, we are starting with education and other people might start in different ways. And the final one shows that all of this is trying to be connected directly to the action platform. So how do we do that? Well, on our next slide, we've used a, a three part journey. We know that the Laudato Si journey is over a number of years. So our first is invitation. We say to our schools that the first step is to pray and to become Laudato Si schools. So in our first uh, step, we offer this opportunity to all of our schools and we are absolutely delighted that 80% of the schools in Scotland are now Laudato Si schools. They make a prayer service of commitment and from that moment they are a Laudato Si school. The next part, is our little combination which is a cycle it happens over and over again pray learn act pray learn act that they take words from scripture they take words from the holy fathers encyclical and then they put both of them into action and then they go back to the beginning again and they pray and they learn and they act and it's something that we never finish and then what we ask them to do is to consider how they are making a change for good. And that's how we feed into the Laudato Si Action Platform. On an annual basis, we ask them to share their good news, to share their stories. 
And of course, the change for good is a play on the fact that we want them to change for the common good. We want them to contribute to society, but we want them to change forever. We want them to change and keep those changes in place. How do we do that? Well, on our next slide, we show that we are inviting our schools to protect all life, prepare for a better future of justice, peace, love and beauty. And the next slide again gives some of the simple ideas. We pray for our world. We learn about the Pope's words. We pray that our friendship with God grows. We learn about what needs to change and how we can change it. And then, as I've said, we put that action into place. So this is a very simple story. It started with the Catholic Education Service, our aid agency, the Scottish Catholic International Aid Fund, and Justice and Peace Scotland. And we knew we wouldn't have all the answers, but we wanted to do something. And so over the last two years, we have had 200 plus schools sign up. In recent days, we have held our first ever learning festival where we had 90 schools from across every part of Scotland come and join us to pray, learn and act together. So thank you for this invitation to be with you today. And here's to saying happy birthday Laudato Si Action Platform. Thank you, Barbara, uh, for all the amazing work in Scotland. We are inspired by the commitment to achieve integral ecology. And thank you all uh, for all the comments that were coming, uh, congratulating the work. Uh, thank you, uh, Bishop McKinley, uh, Sister Runita, and Barbara for your testimonies. They are definitely a source of inspiration for all of us today and a light of hope. We hope that they will be helpful to our audience and we would certainly love to keep sharing as well as other testimonies and to create connections around the LSAP. Now, we want to invite all of you to visit the social media accounts of the Laudato Si Action platform and share the video and recent post of the annual celebration using the hashtag LSAP2022. Let us all post during the next minutes the great joy of the celebration of our first year together at the Laudato Si Action platform. Let's share the joy of building a better future together with a profound care for each other, our creator, and all creation. Please also don't forget to keep, to keep making your own local celebrations and commitments. And now, before we close our event, we want to, to finish this moment as we started. So let us draw our time together in prayer. I would like to invite Sister Sheila to join us again on the screen and lead us in the closing prayer. Thank you so much. This has been a marvelous experience. So dear God, thank you for this time of grace, of recognizing your loving presence here with us now. We've experienced one full year of our sisters and brothers around the globe taking concrete steps towards sustainable lifestyles through inspirational Laudato Si plans. Together, we have seen seeds planted that are growing with the promise of a future full of hope for our planet. We have listened to the voices of the poor and tried to attend to their needs and well being, especially those fleeing devastating conflicts and disastrous environmental consequences. We have stood in solidarity with one another, helping each other to know what is important to be strengthened and developed. We have responded to the voices of the indigenous cultures, valuing their perspectives and wisdom 
and standing with them to preserve their unique heritages. We have attended to the voice of the earth, our mother, and have witnessed her beauty and precious diversity of species. We have stood to protect the plants and animals of the land and oceans from exploitation and pollution. We have accepted our responsibility for an ecological economy and have worked towards divesting from fossil fuels and investing in alternative energy resources. We have promoted a just response to the damages and losses due to the severe impacts of climate change inflicted on vulnerable communities and countries. We have valued the importance of science and our responsibility to make change happen. We have acknowledged the data regarding the environmental impact of our behaviors. We have networked with others locally and in major conferences to promote the advancement of integral ecology, affecting the social, environmental, economic, and cultural impacts. Our advocacy has focused on COP27 for climate change and COP15 for biodiversity. Our faith has been deepened as our spirituality influences our action. Contemplation and prayer inform our decisions of faith. So together we have challenged anew to do our part, not alone, but many as one, to make the tipping point for change. Realizing that God is guiding our lives through the gifts of our companionship with each other. Recognizing the importance of listening and dialoguing, reflecting on new ways of being. Witnessing the many meaningful actions of our lives. Hearing the stories from those who have cherished the land, building a future so that others may thrive planting and watering in the spirit of God, wishing a life of abundance for everyone. So dear God, as we continue our journey together, help us to be all that you are calling us to be. Remind us of your tender love in the beauty of creation and in the love we express to one another. We are the sowers of hope that another world is possible because we believe it is so. We will do all we can as members of one family to bring this dream to a reality. With our commit, compassionate commitment, we say, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Sheila. We keep united in prayer and working together on our mission of caretakers of creation. Thank you all for joining this celebration today, for joining our first anniversary. If you are already enrolled at the Laudato Si Action platform, continue your journey. And if you haven't done so already, we invite you to go to the Laudato Si Action platform website and sign up to be part of the action and embark on a seven year journey towards integral ecology and sustainability. God bless you.